uh, right here in this house. This is my beautiful wife, Christy Ann, right here. Uh, in, terms of, in terms of Davis family, she's the one who does uh, most of the work. Everything. <laughs> right, 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 right. Your hair looks great. Ah, right. So um, we appreciate and thank the sponsors. We thank all the donors. Uh, everything has been very wonderful. We we hosted this event four years ago and just erased on that board uh, tonight. Uh, all of the donations that were, all the donators and everyone that, that, uh, that contributed, we just erased it tonight. So where it says thank you, that was originally the one from four, four years ago uh, where we had all of, the, all of the people. And that was a quick four years, yeah. right? Uh, so anyways, I want to thank everybody. But now I'm going to actually turn it over to uh, Marissa. Who, everyone, obviously. Yeah, there's no introduction. Oh. Oh, thank you. Uh, Thank you to Jeremiah and Christiane and uh, Andrew and Patrick who are somewhere uh, for, well, I guess that's now we know where they are, <laughs> for opening up their home uh, and making this event uh, possible. Um, uh, I have, uh, uh, I've had the pleasure of working with NCTE. I've worn a lot of hats over many years, uh, but that includes two full terms on the board of directors of NCTE. Uh, the group was founded in 2003 uh, to give a voice to the transgender community at the federal level. Uh, and over these past 15 years, NCTE has done some remarkable work uh, with some remarkable persons uh, on the staff, uh, starting with our executive director. Uh, we have fought uh, at the federal level for all sorts of laws and policies, especially policies uh, that are trans-inclusive. Uh, and although the tone in Washington has changed a bit over the last year, uh, NCTE is still leading the way uh, in trying to protect those gains we made and in particular with Congress uh, fighting against the nomination of homophobic and transphobic nominees uh, because we don't want those people to get lifetime appointments and use those positions to promote discrimination. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing Mara before she, uh, NCT was ever formed. Uh, we first met at a bar and a conference in Atlanta many years ago. Um, and uh, I, I don't know if I can say this, but I will anyway because I've had two cocktails. Um, she didn't even have a name. And I just said, oh, hell, let's just vote on it. And, uh, and, and of course, my suggestion lost. But nonetheless, uh, we're, we're pleased uh, with Mara. We're pleased with the work that NCTE does. It has one of the smallest staffs, and as Mara will confirm, we're up here about this high. Um, but nonetheless, uh, NCTE has done some remarkable work. She's been here to Nashville many times before, and we're really thrilled to have her back. And please uh, join me in welcoming the Executive Director of the National Center for Transgender Equality, Mara Kiesling. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, Y'all hear me okay? Usually nobody has any trouble hearing me. I'm, I just have the kind of voice that carries. So I'm Mara. So, so Marissa, thank you for that wonderful introduction. Christiane and Jeremiah, thank you so much for having us in your home again and for just caring about things that matter. And I'm just so thankful for you guys. And, and your home is awesome, isn't it? Um, I want this little thing, this little area in my home. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I would sit there every night and I might have like a bottle of something in this. <laughs> anyway, thank you for having us here and thank you for everything you do. Thank you. So, uh, you're welcome. Thanks. So, uh, so I'm Mara. Um, uh, I work at the National Center for Transgender Equality. I serve transgender people. And um, things have changed so much in the 15 years since we started NCT. TV. And I want to first tell you about something that happened that, that happened to me in Denver a couple months ago, because it just showed me how much things have changed. So I graduated from high school in 1977, which I think makes me one of the oldest people here. But when I graduated, so the people who are my age and older will verify this for you. When I graduated from high school in 1977, there was not an out transgender child in public school in the entire United States. It wasn't even possible or thinkable. In fact, if you had asked me then, I would have told you that I was the only transgender person in the world. There was no internet. Um, there, was, there was not much. 
you know, I, I first came out to my parents. My family's been amazing. Uh, I haven't lost even the family members I wanted to lose. <laughs> um, but when I first came out to my parents, when I was three years old, it was 1963, and I put on my sister's brownie uniform, you know, the little sub-Girl Scout brownies, you know, and I said, see, I'm a girl. And my dad quickly sat down at his laptop, and he went online, and and my mom said, what are you doing? This is 1963. We don't have computers yet. Um, that was a joke. Um, but there was nothing they could do. And they just said, no, no, you're a boy. And boys are always boys. And I was the only one. I didn't know that one of my best friends in high school was trans also. I didn't find that out until I was about 40. That's also when I found out that the person who lived next door to me in my dorm in college had also transitioned. But it was not something we could have talked about. There was no way to have community. Then the internet came and we were able to have community and we were able to realize that we didn't have to be marginalized anymore. And things have changed so much, so fast. You know, Marissa and I and some others, and Vicky have been lobbying for a million years now. But I, one of the, the two sort of bookends for how things have moved politically from my point of view, one was in 2001, I met with a minority leader in the Pennsylvania State Senate, a guy named Senator Mello, who was a liberal Democrat, and he wouldn't do what we wanted, but then he said to me, but Mara, look at the bright side. Five years ago, I wouldn't have let you in my office. <laughs> and that was true. I worked for a presidential campaign um, uh, some years after, uh, some years around then, we'll say. And they made sure I was never anywhere near the candidate because they were afraid that the candidate would get their picture taken with a transgender person. Um, I have since had my picture taken with that person. But the bookend piece to that senator telling me that in 2001 was in 2016, two days before Thanksgiving, I was in the Oval Office and I got to thank President Obama for all the amazing work he had done for trans people. Um, we are now allowed in the Oval Office. We are now allowed in Congress. We are allowed in the State House. We were. We still? <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> we have been. You want water? You have been. Yeah. Can we get water? Yeah, that would be so helpful. And we will again. Oh, we will outlast this um, first. <laughs> um, so the National Center for Transgender Equality, Now I'm going to talk a little bit about our president in just a minute. By the way, I, I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> really? Just, let me get that off my back or my chest. Um, I'll get it, just get it off. Um, so the National Center for Transgender Equality has primarily focused our attention on policy change. Um, work for transgender people really falls into three categories in my mind. I'm going to go to this imaginary chart here and show you policy change, <laughs> public education, and direct services. There are a lot of direct services, medical services, legal services, um, support, advice, kind of services. We don't really do that. We focus on the public policy and the public education stuff. And we've been really phenomenally successful. Um, during the Obama administration, we worked on um, what ultimately turned out to be 165 federal policy changes. Um, we didn't lead on all of them. Actually, a small handful of them, we don't know, four or five, we had nothing to do with. There was one weird thing near the end of the Obama administration where the General Services Administration, which owns most of the federal buildings, said trans people can use the correct bathroom in all federal buildings. And my policy director and I looked at each other and said, oh, we should have asked for that. <laughs> so there were some things we had nothing to do with, but there were a lot of them that we led on, a lot of them that we collaborated on, and we got 165. Now, we haven't had very many wins in the last year and a half, but we have not been without wins. And in early April, we're going to have our biggest win of the Trump uh, administration, and uh, if he's watching... Because there's nowhere to watch. But uh, uh, in, in early April, the Medicare, uh, the people who run Medicare are issuing new Medicare cards. Medicare is the health care program, mostly for seniors, but for lots of people with uh, 
disabilities. And there's always been a gender, it's always said male or female, smack in the middle of the card where you can't miss it. So trans seniors have had to out themselves, not just to their doctors. I actually am a big believer that you should probably out yourself to your doctor. But you shouldn't have to out yourself to the receptionist, to the, to the clerk at Walgreens or CVS. And the new cards are coming out, and we've worked with them to get the gender marker taken off. I will guarantee you the White House doesn't know about this yet. <laughs> um, but I don't think they can stop it. And they would have to they would have to be awfully mean to try to stop it and, and be willing to just throw away money. And this administration has shown that it is both mean and willing to throw away money. But that's going to happen, and it's really an Obama victory, which... Uh, that I wish President Trump would hear because it would probably make him a little jittery to, to hear me seem ungrateful because his White House knows nothing about it. Anyway, so we're still working on this federal policy stuff. We're working on a lot of state issues. You know, you're lucky. You're so lucky in Tennessee to have the Tennessee Trans Political Coalition or Caucus. The C, everybody's got a C, and I struggle with the CRC <laughs> Center. There's this coalition. Sometimes it's caucus. I don't even know. But you guys are so lucky here in that you have a group like TTPC that's doing this work. Now, the truth is you're a little less lucky because you have a legislature that is a lot like the Tennessee legislature. Um, and it is not a friendly legislator to, to trans people who are human beings. Um, but we, we're working in a lot of states right now. We expect to pass a, a, a really decent bill in New Hampshire next week. Um, we just barely lost a bill in Utah today, a birth certificate bill, allowing people to change their birth certificates to match who they really are, um, failed in Utah today. But there's activity, and we're moving forward. And so I just want to talk very directly about the, 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 the current administration in Washington, because trans people are unquestionably under attack. We are under attack, and we are getting hurt, and there will be a body count. Anytime you take health care away from millions of people, and when you specifically target specific types of people, people are going to die. So I don't want to let my optimism that I'm going to express shortly hide the fact that I understand these tragedies really are happening to real people, and, and we need to understand that and, and try to mitigate the damage. But... Um, the, the, the attacks have been around Title IX. That's the sex discrimination laws for education. Um, courts over the last 15 years have said, transgender, if you discriminate in education against a transgender child, it's because of their sex. It's because either they're a boy or they're a girl, or they're neither, but it might be because you don't think they're the right kind of boy or not enough of a girl or whatever. That's about sex. So the courts have said very clearly, Sex discrimination laws protect trans people. Well, the Obama administration agreed. The Trump administration has now said, nope, we're not going to enforce the law for transgender children. They've said the same thing with Title VII of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, which is sex discrimination in employment. Very importantly, particularly for any trans people who might be here, the Trump administration cannot change the law. They can refuse to enforce things because they're jerky jerk faces. Um, but we're still protected. They went after the trans military uh, service members. They're, we estimate about 15,000, uh, probably a little less than that, maybe 14, 13, 5, who, uh, who are currently serving. And about a year and a half ago, they were told they could come out and serve. And then suddenly, last July, um, President Trump started tweeting that he didn't like that. And um, and put all of these, these people's careers at risk. Um, we've been fighting. We've won. We collectively, not NCT, we don't do lawsuits, but there have been four lawsuits where courts have said it's, he can't do that. And just yesterday and the day before, we started seeing generals, again, speak out against the ban on trans military service. In my office, I have a list of how we approach the Trump administration. And it says, stop them, slow them down, mitigate the damage, make them pay politically, and uh, wait or plan to fix it later. And we're doing all those things. And we've had some really good luck 
stopping some things. We've been very good at slowing things down. The military ban is a really good example. He announced it either June 28th or July 28th, and it still ain't happening. Um, we found ways to mitigate the damage to a lot of his actions in ways that I just don't want to say because this is actually being videotaped. And I just don't want them to have a roadmap on how to hurt us, but we've been mitigating the damage. And boy, have we been making them pay politically. Every time he attacks transgender people, we make sure it strengthens us and weakens him. And it has happened over and over again. It happened with, when he took the kids' protection away. It happened when he took the job protection away. It happened, my favorite time was recently, you may have heard the Centers for Disease Control said in their, that no more in budget documents could you use seven certain words, uh, including words that why would they be in health prevention anywhere, in uh, disease prevention anyway, like evidence, science-based. I mean, it was just an absolute disgrace. One of the words was transgender. We immediately at NCTV went after his throat on this. I'm sorry, I'm actually a pacifist, but my language has become very colorful over the last year. <laughs> but we really went right at them so hard, they started saying, oh, look at them overreacting. Within 48 hours, they were denying it ever happened. That is a, that is a victory. It's not, it would have been a better victory to not have to do that, but we're fighting as much as we can over and over again. And I was with a public official a few months ago, and, and this is what I want to assure people of. This public official said, Mara, I hope trans people know they can weather this storm. I hope trans people can weather this storm. And I said, you have it wrong. Trans people are the fucking storm. <laughs> There were no trans people out 20 years ago. Oh, I forgot to tell you the thing I started with. I never finished the story. So 1977, no out trans kids anywhere in public school in the United States. I was in Denver a few months ago, and I met a high school sophomore who was one of 10 out kids at an all-girls Catholic high school. <laughs> okay, that is amazing cultural change, amazing change to the education system. An amazing opportunity for kids to be safer. But we are the storm, and we have made so much progress, and we are still going to be making progress after this guy goes back to his stupid apartment with his stupid golden toilet and his <laughs> uh, bribe payments to porn stars. Um, public policy change is a long game, um, and we know how to play it. And when he is gone, in either two and a half more years or six and a half more years, <laughs> or six months from now. <laughs> um, and the grass will be green again, and the sky will be blue. And we know how to do the we know how to do the policy, and and we will um, we will be able to fix it. In the meantime, there's nothing good about the Trump administration. I, so I just want to say that. But, but if there's a bright side, and that's hard to say there's a bright side, but if there's a bright side, it is that all of the people who do social justice, all of the people who represent marginalized people, all of the people who care about health care, who care about immigration, who care about all these things, we are all working together and supporting each other in ways that I've never seen. I think all of our hearts were in it before, but now we understand if somebody's attacked, we all just have to be there. So when there was a Muslim ban, I was there. When the trans military ban happened, the Muslim advocates were with us. The Planned Parenthood was with us all the way. So when they try to defund Planned Parenthood, we're there for that. Um, and we are all standing with each other and we are making it really, really hard to be the Trump administration. Um, they're breaking all the rules, they're breaking laws, they're breaking decency and morality, um, and we will beat them, and it just isn't going to be hard. But in the meantime, while NCT is part of what is sort of glibly called the resistance, we need to keep with the insistence, and we are still trying to find ways to, to, to move forward.
like the Medicare card thing I told you about, but other ways instead. So this is not a product placement endorsement I'm about to do. But I want to tell you about an amazing campaign that's happening right now. That's the kind of thing we're looking to do. So there's a store over at the Green Hills Mall called Lush. And they make bath bombs and soap and other kinds of soap and yet other kinds of soap. And thank you very much. And they came to us and they said, we want to have a campaign about transgender rights. And so we worked with them and they... In their stores for a two-week period, the last two weeks in February, they, they first of all, they have trained all 7,500 of their employees all across uh, the United States and Canada. Um, in our line of work, we never have an opportunity to train 7,500 people at once. And they did it for us. We, thought we helped them with the materials and stuff. They created a little book that is in all of their stores. I went over to the Green Hills Mall today, and there's some guy sitting on a park sitting on a little bench outside of Nordstrom reading one of these books. And I'm like, holy smokes. <laughs> and then they created this product. So their shtick is handmade stuff. And so this is what's called a bath melt. It melts in your bath. It is pink. It's the colors of the transgender flag. It's called Inner Truth is the name of this product. Since they launched it on the day after Valentine's Day, it has been their number one selling product. And 100% of the gross of the product, every penny they bring in from this product, I guess except the tax, goes to transgender organizations. Um, and they expect to give away hundreds of thousands of, of dollars to trans organizations. But more importantly, they educate 7,500 people. I went to their manager's conference in New Orleans a couple weeks ago, and I met all of the people who do the production in the factory. They all had to go through transgender training. Um, it's just been amazing. And now they're doing transgender training of their customers. Trans people are coming in there and feeling safer. It's the kind of thing that's happening. So anyway, I, I've become a huge Lush fan, needless to say. <laughs> um, and uh, if, if, if you are trans or have trans children, I really urge you in the next week to go over to Lush and see this. It will just, it'll just make you feel like you're in a bath with a nice warm bath melt. I have never been in a bath with a bath melt. And frankly, I am so tall. I'm just a large person who, if the bath bomb was in the bathtub with me, there would be no room for water. <laughs> so I've never been a bath bomb person. But anyway, we're looking for educational opportunities like that. We've started, and this I'm going to finish up really soon, but I, but I just want to tell you about one other big project we're doing, which is so important. I think the policy work we do is really vital. It's, it's, it's helped in a lot of ways. It's helped people get their ID documents. It's helped kids be better protected in schools. There's a lot, it's helped people get health care. But the most important work, trans people, allies of trans people, parents of trans people, siblings of trans people can do is educate the people around them, is to teach their families, teach their um, neighbors and their co-workers and the people they worship with. And so what we've done is we've started a storytelling project. We actually have somebody on our staff whose title is Community Storytelling Advocate. And what she does is she, she and now we have two parents on our staff, and they work with trans people, and they work with families of trans people to tell their stories, to figure out what are the things to say and not say. How do you do it in a way that's safe and protects your child? How do you do it in a way that gets the maximum impact? How do you do a letter to the editor? How do you do a television interview? And, and we help them through all of this, and then we pitch stories to the media and, and get them in front of cameras and get them in front of reporters. And it's had a really, really tremendous impact. We have hundreds of people who are now telling their stories in really exciting, vibrant ways. And that's the kind of work we're trying to do now. When the truth is, we can't get a lot of good federal policy done. We can stop things. We've so far beaten um, two judicial nominees who are going to get federal judgeships for life, including one person who said transgender children were part of Satan's plan. First, I thought he said Santa's plan, so I didn't react right away. But then when I figured out it was Satan's plan. 
say. I made that up. He did say Satan's plan. <laughs> I didn't think it was Santa's plan because Santa is a good guy. <laughs> but anyway, we beat a uh, nominee for the um, to be army secretary who was very, very anti-trans, and he lost because of it. Um, and we make sure when these people lose, everybody knows why they lost. So in 2016, one incumbent governor lost re-election, and that was um, Pat McCrory in North Carolina, who had shepherded the bathroom, the anti-trans bathroom bill through. And everybody in North Carolina and every governor and state legislator in the whole country knows Pat McCrory lost because he did that stupid anti-trans bathroom <laughs> bill. So we are playing hardball. Um, and that's what you have to do with elected officials because that's how they play. We know how to do that. We're working hard. We're trying to educate people. And I am so thankful for all of the advocates here in Tennessee. Um, I feel you're paying a little bit better now. When we had Obama, um, things were pretty good. I liked him. <laughs> I liked him. Remember when we had a smart, dignified, funny president in the White House? <laughs> Yeah, um, but um, I, I am so thankful for the work everybody does here, from the work from protecting your own children to protecting trans children in general to facing down your state legislature. You know, I don't know if you know this, but I think Marissa has got to be the most experienced trans lobbyist or lobbyist on trans issues in the whole history of the universe. <laughs> um, but I mean, really, I mean... She's just certainly, um, she just has to be. Um, I just can't think of who, I mean, I'm probably in second place and I'm way, way behind her. <laughs> so um, you, you guys are really lucky. Please know that we're in, 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 um, in D.C. working to protect transgender people. Particularly now, a lot of our work has been for children. Um, there are a lot of trans children out now, and they are really at risk with this knucklehead in the White House. I'm sorry, that's disrespectful. President Knucklehead. <laughs> um, so just know that we're there. We're fighting. We're going to keep fighting. Um, we have come so far, and we're not, we, we have not come this far to only come this far. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep resisting. We're going to keep turning it on its head. Every time he attacks us, we're going to change it from a loss to a loss with a strong educational component. Um, Nelson Mandela once said, I never lose. I win or I learn. And we've taken that to heart. We're working really hard. And, um, and that's, that's really pretty much all I wanted to say, except for one more thing. Because Daniel... When's a good time to hit people up for money? Every time. <laughs> so this is expensive. Um, this is we are super frugal, um, but we do things for our supper sometimes. And I just want to point out to people that I didn't have one, but in your name tag, you have a donation card because Daniel's like that. Can I? Tell a little side story about Daniel. <laughs> this story is absolutely true. There are these three guys stuck on a desert island. And they're very religious guys, and, and two of them are just praying, help me, get us off the island. And the other guy's just sitting back relaxing. And uh, the two guys finally go up to him and they're like, hey, dude, you're the most religious one among us, and you're not praying to get off the island. What's up? And he said, you know, two years ago, I gave $100 to NCTE. Last year, I gave them $200. This year, I pledged to Daniel that I would give $500. Believe me, he'll find us. <laughs> Completely true story. <laughs> Not a true story. Anyway, if you are so moved, we would be so thankful and honored and it would supercharge our work. Um, What's your website? Our website is transequality.org um, and uh, has a lot of great resources on how to change IDs, how, what's going on in the news, 
how you can step in and help on federal policy issues or state policy issues in your state. Um, and, it, you know, we really are very frugal. So every we really believe that the people who support us are people who want us to treat their money well and to be efficient. Um, and, and I promise you, we will always be the most effective organization dollar for dollar. Um, we are very uh, assertive. Assertive sounds better than aggressive. <laughs> so let's go with assertive. But believe me, we are all of the A words. <laughs> um, so if you're so inclined, we would love to see you think about that. I would note in particular, monthly donations are so helpful for us. And we have two red bags. It's these two here. Um, I'm going to leave this one right here if you're so inclined to put something in it. Um, it matters a lot. Now, you'll notice that we now have two separate little organizations. There's two logos on your name tag. We have always been the National Center for Transgender Equality, which is an educational organization. We're called a 501c3, and donations are tax deductible. But it means we can't do electoral work. We can't say, don't vote for Donald Trump. And believe me, in 2020, well, I don't want to say who we're going to endorse or not endorse, but I... I just don't feel like it's going down the first place so far. Um, we need to be able to speak out and say, here's why candidate Donald Trump isn't good for trans people. And until this past October, when we started the National Center for Transgender Equality Action Fund, we could not do that. Donations to the Action Fund are not tax deductible. If you're like me and most people, and that doesn't matter, to you because you don't really itemize your deductions on your tax returns, because I don't, um, then a donation to the Action Fund would be great. But there is a spot to check if you do want your donation to be tax deductible, in which case it will go into the regular NCTP organization. Um, either way, it helps us fight, it helps us win, and, you know, we just, for trans people, for trans children, we have not come this far to only come this far. We will keep fighting for everybody every day, super hard, and um, I'm so thankful to be here. Jeremiah, Christiane, thank you guys so much for having us. All the folks up here, many of you are sponsors. I just can't thank you enough. It matters so much. Um, we will continue just um, kicking ass. So thank you very much, and go eat and drink stuff. <laughs> and Kathy would like to say one thing. Hey, I, I'm the activity coordinator for Tennessee Transgender Political Coalition. Josh is the lobbyist now. And Monday there's a bill coming up at 1030. It's at the House Committee. And it's a, one that wants to be fun Planned Parenthood. So on our website, on TTPC, or on the Facebook page, you can find an action alert, and you can call the people or email people on the committee. And if anybody's available, they'd like people to come up at 1030 and wear a key. And, uh, and also, yeah, it's Monday, whatever. And there's also the next bill we'll be watching out for is one that um, what they want to do is have the Attorney General pay for any legal fines for a school that tries to tell kids that they have to use the bathroom of uh, the sex at the time of birth. That's not in committee yet, but it will be coming up sometimes, probably this session, so I'll be watching out for it. Thank you so much, and thanks for the work on those bills. And Planned Parenthood, by the way, is not just an abortion provider. That's an important part of what they do, and I don't want to diminish that. But they also do cancer screenings, and they are the second largest provider of transgender health care in the country. I won't tell you who the first is because it's a federal government agency, and this is being videotaped, and I don't want them to pull it back. <laughs> but Planned Parenthood has dozens and dozens of, of their agencies now that do transfer. So thank you, everybody. Enjoy the amazing food and 